Whilst Microsoft make headlines investing in OpenAI and pushing the AI boundaries, other parts of Microsoft are pushing through the largest acquisition in gaming history. In January of last year, Microsoft announced it would be acquiring Call of Duty and World of Warcraft giant Activision Blizzard for the largest acquisition in video game history at $68.7 billion. <laughs> As I alluded to, with the size of Microsoft, it's essentially just a load of large companies under a single header. And one faction of this is its gaming business. For a bit of a timeline, in 2014 they acquired Mojang for 2.5 billion. In 2018, they strategically acquired Bethesda Softworks for 7.5 billion dollars, before in 2020 acquiring their parent company, ZeniMax Media, for 10.5 billion. So as you can tell, they're on a rampage of who will not top video game companies. And as you can see by the price tag, it is not a cheap industry. Next step on this mission, Activision Blizzard. So with mergers and acquisitions as large as this, they have to get approved by the countries in which these companies operate in due to antitrust laws. Because whilst we don't trust big companies, we trust government. So first up, let's look at China. Blizzard might ring some bells in your mind because Activision Blizzard is the company which created World of Warcraft. Now World of Warcraft has 3.2 million users in China. That's approximately a third of its entire user base. However, due to a licensing disagreement with their partner, NetEase, Activision Blizzard shut down their servers in China in January this year, leaving over 3 million Chinese gamers with no access to World of Warcraft. Well, apparently this shutdown was due to communications around this merger which is happening. However, well, China's now given it the green light, so if you're in China... So the EU led an investigation to see whether this would be a fair acquisition, and they found five things. One, Microsoft would have no incentive to refuse to distribute Activision's games to Sony, which is leading distributor of console games worldwide. There's actually four PlayStations to one Xbox sold in the EU. Two, even if Microsoft did decide to withdraw Activision's games from the PlayStation, it would not significantly harm competition in the consoles market. Three, even without this transaction, Activision would not have made its games available for multi-game subscription services, as this would cannibalize sales of individual games. This here doesn't really make any sense to me, because basically what they're saying is that they weren't gonna make it third party anyway. And so if you don't know, Xbox have Game Pass, which basically allows you access to loads of games through one single subscription. Now here they're saying that Activision would not have made its games available through such a pass, even without this transaction, which then implies that it's not going to be done with this transaction. But if you're getting bought over from Microsoft, whether or not you were going to do it in the first place doesn't matter because you're probably going to do it now because they have Game Pass. So that one's a bit weird. Four, the acquisition would harm competition in the distribution of PC and console games via cloud game streaming services. And five, if Microsoft made Activision's games exclusive to its own cloud game streaming service, Microsoft could also strengthen the position of Windows in the market for PC operating systems. Now this initially doesn't seem like a problem because they sell Xboxes, but think, Microsoft own Windows and the Xbox. So if you use either to game, you're probably utilizing their cloud services and the cloud services they use is Azure, which is their own cloud platform. Whilst Microsoft here have put their hands in so many pies, baskets, whatever the phrase is, <laughs> got their fingers in too many pies. I think that's the phrase. <laughs> To remedy this, Microsoft have proposed a 10-year licensing deal which will let providers add Activision Blizzard games for the next 10 years for free. And on top of that, if you already have an Activision Blizzard game, you'll continue to be able to play that no matter where you got it for the next 10 years. But I think it's because Microsoft can see in the long run they are winning using cloud and if they can get hold of Activision, they're just absolutely dominating the market. But anyway, with these remedies, the EU has approved. So next up, let's look at the UK and this is where it gets a bit fishy. So the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, in the UK had rejected the deal, finding that the deal could reduce competition in the cloud gaming market as they say Microsoft already have 60 to 70% of. Microsoft, however, are coming back at this by saying that the CMA made fundamental errors in its calculations and assessment of market share data for cloud gaming services. And so, if they're just outright rejecting it here, it makes you wonder, is there an ulterior motive? 
Well, it turns out that the CMA's current serving senior director previously worked for a law firm representing Sony in their regulatory protest to this very deal. He also spoke at a conference last week where another speaker just so happens to represent another law firm also representing Sony and Google in leading complaints against Microsoft's acquisition. And whilst this here might sound like pure speculation, well, well. Big Colin was previously instrumental in blocking a merger between Asda and Sainsbury's, which are two of the largest UK supermarket chains. Now, the reason that was weird is because he also served as legal advisor to Tesco's, which is the largest UK supermarket chain. So he previously worked advising to Tesco's, and then suddenly he's on the CMA, and there's an Asda Sainsbury's, which could make them a massive force against Tesco's, and he just so happened to block it. At that time, the CMA did not consider this conflict of interest, so it's unlikely that this will be a conflict of interest either. Finally, let's look at the US of A. So unlike these other major players who have made decisions, the US is actually still investigating the deal. It looks like the FTC is likely to look at the same factors as the EU and as the UK, but it looks like they'll be looking at other factors as well, such as how it's gonna stifle innovation and consumer prices. Now this speculation comes from the Amazon antitrust paradox, which was first proposed by Lena Khan, who is the current chair of the FTC. Now the paradox argues that large dominant companies are able to use their market power to stifle competition and innovation, which can lead to higher prices, lower quality products, and less choice for consumers. And Lena Khan herself has stated that this is an unfair mega merger that will stifle competition across the video game sector. Instead of looking at how this is just going to affect the video game industry, which it's a weird one because it's a non-essential product, it's kind of for fun. And so to be like, oh, you've made the next Call of Duty twice the price, that's unfair. That just seems like a bit of a dramatic way to look at it. But I would look at this more so that they are now looking to increase that power that they have in another field such as the video game industry. And so I think you have to look at this holistically as a Microsoft thing and not just as a video game industry thing. And so it does seem like it's going to be imminent because it seems as if they might even just ignore the UK. But let me know what you think down below and I'll see you next time for what's going on in tech.